Hey everybody, it's Mr Underwood Jones here. Uh, the Science Department has put together a bit of a, uh, a lesson, uh, some resources on things that will help you uh, get the most out of the home learning you're doing. Um, this is the same that those of you that are coming into school in year 10 uh, will be running through with science as well. Um, so first off uh, is my part, we're going to be looking at the extended response questions um, that you'll come across in the exams and that you've probably been set in some of your GCSE pod assignments. Um, essentially, they, these questions are, are between four and six marks, um, and when the examiners mark your, your exams, they'll be marked in, in tiers. Six mark questions in three tiers, four mark questions in two tiers. We're just going to look at the three different tiers for now. Um, the, essentially, the, the one to two marks on a question uh, you've, is what you get when you have included some correct science, but there's not any particular structure to your answer. And uh, if you've got some mistakes in there as well, that's not a problem at all. You can still get those one to two marks. The second tier is when you have started to link your concepts together in order to answer a question. Um, there can still be the odd mistake in there, um, but uh, and essentially your examiner is looking for the things you've said that are good science. Um, and they're, they're, they're kind of on your side in that respect. And then to, to hit the five to six marks uh, in an extended response question, then there needs to be a clear structure. Um, your answer has to kind of make sense from beginning to end. Um, and that there's links between concepts and that it answers the question. Um, getting that, that fifth or sixth mark is usually quite difficult if you've got things in there that are, that are just wrong science. Um, but that's less, less, less common than you might think. Um, I'm not suggesting that you memorize the, t the tiers that they're marked in, but just keep in mind you want to answer the question, you want to link your concepts together um, using words like therefore and because, um, and aim to write about half as many points uh, as you have marks. If you've got a six mark question and you've said two things, you've probably not said enough for the, the number of marks available. If you've got a six mark question and you've said three or four things, that's great. Um, and and that, that's just a, a rough rule for when you're sitting an exam or doing a test in school or completing one of your assignments from GCSE pod. Now, uh, I've just got an example here where I run through a couple of questions. Um, this question here, we've got uh, two students measuring the speed of sound in air. And the sort of questions you want to ask yourself about an extended response question is, to start with, what topic or keywords is this about? Then what's the command word in the question? And what do, what do I need to say to get marks in this question? So looking at this one here, what topic or keywords is this about? Well, we've got something here. It's, it talks about sound waves uh, traveling, re being reflected from the wall and something, something here about speed of sound. So that's enough to give us the idea that we've got waves, echoes, reflection, speed. We're, we're talking about that, those kinds of topics. The command word in this question is down here, describe how they can determine the speed of sound. Uh, now describe can mean one of two things, it's either write a method, step by step, or say what you see. Now in this case, they're, they're asking you how to determine something, so that's a method. They're asking you to write in a step by step method. What, and then we come to what, what do I need to say, um, and we're gonna run through for this question. Um, to start with, if we want to know the speed of something, we need to know the distance and divide it by the time. So I probably need to say that in my answer somewhere. And then we're looking for a step by step and we want to include measurements we take. So measure the distance from with a tape measure to the wall and back again because, and there's a linking word there, that's how far the sound travels. And then another measurement, measure the time between the bricks banging together and hearing the echo. And then we go back to this equation that we wrote down, speed equals distance divided by time, and say, and then divide the distance by the time taken, and you'll find the speed of the sound wave. Notice you don't actually, you don't have to work out the speed of the sound wave. They haven't given us any numbers in the question, so they're obviously not expecting us to, uh, to work out uh, a numerical answer. Just how would you get there? We're looking at a chemistry example here, uh, a little bit different this time. We've got a big table of data, and uh, a, a, uh, the, the command itself is down here at the bottom, describe and explain the trends shown in the student's results. We're looking at the same three things to consider. What topic or keywords is this about? What command word have they used? And what do I need to say? Well, topic or keywords, I already said it was chemistry, but 
looking at the, the headings of the table, we've got concentration, moles, increase in temperature. So this is probably something like rates of reaction um, or no, probably rates of reaction. So we've got temperature change, concentration, reactions, those are words I came up with earlier. Um, what's the command word? Well, we've got two here, a little bit more complicated. We, we have to describe the trends and then we have to explain the trends. Um, so I've color coded them so you'll see where I've hit those in my answer. Um, and describing trends, what do you see? What patterns can you see in the table of data as you read down the table? And then explain the trends. What causes the patterns in the, in, in the table? So we're probably going to describe a pattern and explain it, describe another pattern and then explain it. And uh, it's six marks, so in pro there are probably more than one pattern here or parts to the pattern. Um, so I, I think if we've described two, we've probably covered everything, but we'll look at the data itself. Now looking at that data, there is a pattern between uh, 0 0.1 moles uh, per decimeter cubed and uh, about 0 0.7, where every time the concentration goes up by 0 0.1, the temperature increases by 5. And that means if we double one of the variables, the concentration, we're going to double the increase in temperature. So they must be directly proportional. So we're always worth saying that if it's true. If you double one and the other doubles, directly proportional. So in my answer, I've got the pattern between 0 0.1 and 0 0.7. Um, uh, I need to say what that is. And in, in, I've kind of roughly said it here. It's directly proportional um, because, and this is the explaining bit, because with a linking word in there, the greater the concentration, the greater the frequency of collisions. So the heat is so more heat is produced, increasing the temperature more. So it may have been a while since you'd looked at rates of reaction, and that that bit of explaining uh, might need a bit more re revision uh, for you in particular. But l looking at this question, we're trying to say why? Why does increasing the, the concentration increase the temperature? And knowing those those at those whys is where revision comes in. And the second pattern is in the bottom half of the table, or bottom part of the table, where the increase in temperature stays at 35 degrees for the last four measurements. So uh, the, the, the increase in temperature is constant, um, above 0 0.7 moles per decimeter cubed. And then we need to say why, because another factor is preventing the reaction from happening any faster. And the thing, to, the thing to remember is you don't have to have all of that completed to get any marks. If you've just described the two patterns, you're probably looking at between three, maybe four marks. If you have described one of the patterns and given a, a decent uh, explanation for it, then you could also be hitting three to four marks, which is still a majority of, of what's there for a six mark question. It's not all or nothing. Okay. Um, those uh, will be attached with the with, with this video or sent around on a, in a class chart assignment just so you could have a go yourself. Um, and we are on to looking at flashcards. So Miss Kenny put this together for us. Um, she says hi. And uh, the flashcards are particularly useful when you're trying to to practice uh, key concepts within your revision uh, or your learning. So important fe features of flashcard. It needs to be bold, large, easy to read. Uh, hence, most of this is about making them easy to read. Um, don't put too much text on. Personally, I'd say the, the cells one to the right-hand side there is the upper limit of how much writing you might ever want on a flashcard. The other two, much more useful. Um, and like the, the one on the right is useful, but I, I no more than that. Um, the idea is you should be able to look at them quickly. Um, and then in terms of using them, you can use, use them in e either of these two ways. So you can use them as a, as a quizzing testing method, as option two describes down there. Short question on one side, answer on the back. Um, or you can use them as a, can I, can I remember this information? So you put a, a short bit of information on one side, um, some kind of key to it on the other, whether it's a picture or a keyword, and then look right cover, look right cover check. Uh, three times per card or as a re re return to them in a kind of spaced repetition pattern, both of which are very useful. Okay, uh, this one's from Miss, Miss Burgess. We've got uh, GCSE pod and how to, how to take good notes from the videos that you're watching, which will help you complete the assignments, the questions that are on GCSE pod and uh, get more out of those videos. I gotta say, if I was just watching the videos without writing anything down, uh, I would get lost quite quickly. 
Um, although perhaps not my own subject, but you know, when, when it's new material, if I wasn't taking notes, I would not re remember things for any length of time. So the method that Mrs. Got here is something called the Cornell method. Now there's a link in the in the the in the PowerPoint here that will be sent out with, along in class charts, and that link goes to somebody who's explaining it much better than I will. Um, the Cornell method, in it, in essence, you're going to be writing the title of the video at the top, as you can see there. The the box to the uh, right middle of this is going to be most of your page and that's where you write down most of the key things that come up during the video that you think mm, I probably need to remember that uh, and you you list stuff down as bullet points it doesn't you're not writing for anybody else so it just has to make sense to you um, then once you finish the video you then look over to the left hand side and you're going to write a few key things um, as miss says here keywords key questions that, uh, that, that maybe come up when, you li when you're listening to the video. Once you've finished your notes, the last step is just to write a short summary of the video in your own words, three to six sentences. Essentially, imagine you were telling a friend about a video, uh, a film that you watched, and you wanted to briefly give them a, an idea of what the film was about. That's what you're writing there. Um, if you only had a couple of minutes to catch up on what this video was about, reading that summary should tell you everything you need to know. Okay, uh, there is a, uh, a kind of a copy of this that will be included um, with, with all of this uh, for you to have a look at, a blank copy of the Cornell note method. But to be honest, you can do it on any piece of paper. Okay, this one's from Mr. Richardson. We've got uh, uh, Tassamai and how to get the most from it. Um, so we've got how are you using Tassamai at the moment? Um, it, it is immensely useful for, for embedding the recall level of information for your GCSEs. Uh, naming things, uh, recognizing keywords, definitions, the kind of fundamental bedrock that we build up our understanding from. Um, Tassamai, the, the company, is very confident that if you spend the time working on the course, if you complete the course, they're very confident that it's going to improve your grades. So much so that they are willing to refund the cost of the course if you get if you don't get a grade five as long as you've completed the course now it's not about we don't care about getting the money back we don't want the money back we want you guys to get a grade five but any company is not going to be in business very long if they make promises like that um, and then their product doesn't deliver the key for this is little and often so we want you to use this and we want you to use it effectively so you get the most out of it and it has a big, the biggest impact on what you know and so ho hopefully you feel uh, a certain level of mastery over uh, what you've been studying. The more often you use it, the easier it gets, um, both because you see questions that you've seen before um, and also because you're used to the, the format and uh, the way we've got TASMI set up at the moment and have done most of the year is that the more you do, the less questions you have to answer each day. Um, I think the minimum is 15, um, although if you have seen uh, fewer numbers, then uh, great. Um, but uh, the more often you do it, the fewer questions you have to do. Uh, so if you haven't been on in a while and you go on, you think, God, this is a lot of questions, it does get better. Um, TASMI uses uh, analysis of the answers you give. So the quest topics that you do particularly well on, it shows you less often to give you a bit, your brain a bit of a, a break from that topic and, uh, and it shows you topics that you find harder more often and, and this is even broken down into individual questions. If there's a part of a topic you find tricky, it will show you those questions more often until you start getting them right and the more often you see the questions you, you will eventually, uh, anybody will, will, will uh, start remembering them. It's based on a concept known as spaced repetition, if any of you are interested in looking at the uh, the pedagogy or the psychology of that, and that's the kind of key phrase to search for. But essentially, you, our brains learn best when we're seeing things that we've forgotten a little bit. Um, and Tassamai is built around showing you inf information that you've worked on a little while ago and that you've forgotten a little bit. Uh, so therefore, when you do practice it again, it stays in your head for longer. So how do you go about using it properly? And getting the most out of it well the first one is to is five things first one is to set up a time every weekday to complete your goal whatever time works best for you um, you could be setting a, a reminder on your phone and a, it, however it works for you you could associate it with something that you do every day 
Um, like for me, my coffee in the morning, I get my coffee, get my tasmai out, and I do the two, two at the same time. I'm never going to forget having that coffee. Oy. Um, so I, it helps me always remember to do my tasmai. Then there's no time limit. It's it, uh, although we off, although as students you often want to get tasmai done quickly, and that's completely understandable. That you're not timed in completing it. So if you come across a question, you go, "I what? I have no idea what this is about." Then look it up. Use your revision guide. Use the internet. But you know, look it up. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's not cheating. And then as you see that question again, you're more likely to remember what the correct answer is and not need to look it up a second time. Um, use the video guide. So every now and then Tassamai pops up with a little video uh, that it, su it suggests you watch before you do your quiz. Um, these are identified based on how you've done the questions. And so the, those videos are ones that will help you with a particular topic that, um, that perhaps you need a bit of help with. Um, and Tassamai always tells you if you get an answer right and wrong. So if you see the correct answer pop up and you don't understand why it's the correct answer, that's an excellent time to crack out the revision guide, drop a message on class charts, class charts to one of your teachers and, and ask, find out why that's the right answer. Um, and that, that really will expand your understanding. Okay, TASMI, uh, lastly, TASMI builds a picture of your strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you and your teachers can see this. Uh, I think it's under the tab analysis in TASMI. Um, and we can, we and you can use this to tailor your revision and your learning um, to, to work on areas that are going to improve your science the most. Okay, last but not least, don't guess. Don't just keep going through and clicking a random guess for every question. Um, it, it's a waste of your time. It, it doesn't, doesn't help you learn. And uh, ultimately, it takes longer to complete a daily goal by clicking randomly than it does by trying the questions. Um, I, I have done, I've seen students clicking randomly and it takes them 20, 25 minutes to complete a TASMI. If you're trying to answer the questions, you'll get a higher rate of success, even if you don't feel very confident with it. And, uh, and you'll be done sooner and you'll learn from it, which is the whole point. Okay, La ooh, last but not least, gotta be careful not to clap. It does seem to deafen people when I have my mic on. Um, last but not least, you can try out some of this stuff. So I pick one or two of these options and practice one of those skills. Either complete your daily goal on Tassamai, thinking about the five tips that uh, Mr. Richardson had for you there. Um, look on GCSE pod and take notes using the Cornell method from Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Burgess. Um, make up a set of science flashcards on a topic that you're uh, working on currently in class or that have come up on Tassamai, um, following the tips from Miss Kenny. Um, or choose one of the extended response questions that are uh, been set on class charts along with this and have a go at writing your answers. If you want some feedback on those questions, um, you're more than welcome to send them into your science teacher and uh, via class charts and, and we'll give you some feedback. Um, yeah, okay, well, that's, uh, that's everything. I hope you guys are all staying safe, keeping well, uh, enjoying the nice weather we've got today. I hope it's still nice weather when you're listening to this and uh, yeah. Goodbye.